Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Wednesday, August 31st, 2022. And today I'm gonna be bleeding the hydraulic lifters. Now, the manual calls these a compensating element. But when you go to purchase new ones, they call it a rocker arm ball stud. <laughs> so for clarity in this video, I'm going to be calling this hydraulic lifters from here on out, all right? In another video I titled Installing Valves and Valve Stem Seals, I had already installed these lifters as well. Um, but then, I learned that these things need to be bled down or your valves will be held open at crank. So I think we got to take care of that. So, uh, you know, I, I see the instructions here about, uh, you know, using some wood and pressurizing and everything. You know, so I went on the internet and I searched out, you know, bleeding lifters and everything and this is the kind of lifters everyone's bleeding i mean if you'll notice the, the lifter that we're using here it, it doesn't have it doesn't have a bleeder hole right there's no bleeder hole in these at all like i said mercedes calls these compensating elements in the in the manual and uh maybe that has something to do with it but either way uh, the the principles work the same, but the thing is, there's no bleeder hole, right? So, but at first, you know, I was saying, oh, geez, because the manual called it compensating elements, I, I kind of questioned that, you know, and then I find out, yeah, those are the lifters, you know, and the oil's inside, and right now they're, like, expanded. You know, these things are really, really hard. I, there's no way I can push that down. This one here, I got, just, I could feel it a little bit, this, this one on the other side here. But uh, like this one here is super hard. All of them are rock hard. So what I have to do, you know, according to this, we're going to have to put it into a vise. So for the first time, I actually purchased a vise. I never had a vise before. I always wanted to have a vise, but you know, they're super expensive, right? You don't want to buy the junk ones. And I'm hoping this isn't a junk one. I have to take these out. But also, you know, it mentioned, I even mentioned in my video before about having to check the distance if you mess with these things. Not, not the compensate, not this uh, li lifter. It's not about the lifter, um, but it's about this whole valve assembly here. I might have to buy that tool just to make sure because I bought new valves. Um, I'm hoping I don't have to do that, but chances are that I will. And, uh, you know, and this is how you adjust that height is you just buy a different thrust washer. So as long as you guys didn't touch anything, you didn't send it out to a shop and all that, I think you're going to be OK. So like I said, these were down at uh, 60 Newton meters. I think it's a 24, a 24 millimeter. Oh, boy. Perfectly dry and clean in there, as you can see. Again, see? No hole. So there's no way to do that. Uh, this hole right here is, you know, where things keep pressurized and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think you can put anything in there. I'm not positive, but I'm not going to put anything in there. I'm just going to follow the instructions. Well, unfortunately, I forgot to plug in my mic. Uh, but I can narrate this, and I think I did pretty good with hand gestures here. Uh, but the instructions there say to get some pieces of wood. And so what I did is I took a half-inch paddle bit, and I just, you know, drilled about, you know, a quarter of an inch or so. And that's high-density plywood. Um, it's actually birch plywood. And on the other side, I used the paddle bit, and that was uh, five-eighths. You know, and that would, you know, fit this just perfectly on that side, and that one fits on that side. You'll also notice I've got lines on here. So I made all those lines the same, and then I centered everything up, and then I put lines on the top so I could line up the lines here, 
on the top as well as on the sides. So that way there when I put my lifter inside between those two blocks like that and just line everything up, right? Then we that will ensure that the lifter is perfectly square and that I'm not, you know, hitting that uh, head of the lifter at an angle or anything, you know, putting any kind of stress on there we don't want to put. I want that thing to be squared up. So that way there, I, I'm, I'm ensured that I'm in there. So it says to turn about an eighth of a turn or so, and then, you know, let it set right there. And then uh, we'll back it off, right? So it's like milking a cow or, you know, you know what, it, it's like a plunger. <laughs> So here's we're just pressurizing a little bit and then you'll see that little drip it's there's a little drip just kind of forming on the end of that right now and now I'm gonna back it up I'm gonna push it again and there it comes see so you just have to keep doing this and I found that the best way is to back it off as far back as you can go. And it's kind of nice because these blocks here will hold it so it don't fall on the floor or something like that. You don't want to drop this, that's for sure, right? So I actually put a rubber mat down below just in case. Um, but the block helps hold it. And I say you should back it to where it's nice and loose like that. And then bring it in, right? See, it's still dripping. And you just got to keep doing this back and forth, back and forth. And once you've kind of felt that you've bottomed out, you know, like you don't want to put too much pressure on there. I, I really did not put a whole lot of pressure on. You can feel it. Like he said, it's a, it's a, it's an art. It's a, it's a feel. And anyone mechanically inclined will know what that feels like. You know, you, you've, you've bottomed out. You don't want to try to go beyond that, you know. But I'm just going back and forth and I'm making sure that I'm just kind of completely compressing this. And right there. See, this is where I'm, I feel it. I feel that that's the end. Right? I don't want to crank it really any more than that. And now I'm just going to give it a final little bleed there. Right? Take it all away. See what this thing looks like. So it says, you know, to test it, you can press it with your own grip. Then it's just air and not oil. And then you're done. And I'm just going to demonstrate this in a, a few frames here to show you that even though I bled it back and forth in there, I'm going to be still bleeding this with my hand. There's still some oil inside. So you'll want to keep you know, that oil hold that down, just like I said in the instructions, you have the oil hold, hold down. And I just kind of keep, kept, I'm just showing you now, I actually finished bleeding it at this point. But you see, that's all the oil that I got by hand. So I felt I should just keep doing this and doing this and doing this until finally nothing at all comes out. And then that's how nice and easy it is to compress. So no way that valve is going to be stayed open. All right. So the manual says that you lubricate them and put them in at 60 Newton meters. So I'm on my last two here. And I'm lubricating it with the same oil that I will be putting in the car. Because all I'm doing is lubricating the threads. Lightly lubricate. I'll set my torque wrench to 60 Newton meters. Perfect. All right, let's move on to the next and final one. The 
There it is. 16.2. 16.02, I should say. I think that's what it says. Yeah. 16.02. It's pretty hard to get it exactly, right? <laughs> All right. So I've already done the other head and I've wrapped it all up. So all I got to do now with this one is wrap it up and we can move on to the next project. All right, you guys, that, that takes care of this. Thanks again for watching.